So I'm starting out with a fresh palette and I'm going to go right to my blob tool. From now on you should make sure your blob tool is kind of like this. Okay, so it's as a block, black or outline. Make sure this black is not maybe a process black but a spot color black. And I'll show you why that you should do that later on. But for right now, let's just make a process black into a spot black. So I choose my process black, make a new one called spot, and I can label this spot black if I wanted to. I do not. And I want to make it a rich black, so what I'll do is tip everything over to this side. There's many ways to make a rich black. That's just one of mine. Okay, so now what I want to make sure is there is nothing loaded within my outline of the device. And I also want to make sure that here, this one is loaded with spot color black. So you're always going to be switching this back and forth, forth and back, uh, until you get so sick of that tool that it's just going to be pathetic. Now let me make a few shapes here. So first shape, I'm going to go with one of these, just a circle. Next one I'm going to make an enclosed circle. And the next one I'm going to make something that looks like this. These represent the usual um, suspects for filling in color within an illustration. You always get one that the user gets too lazy to actually attach or connect the lines or maybe it's an illustration that you know the outlines kinda like this it's not it's not connected it's just free flowing and then it's more connected at the bottom stating that this is maybe a little bit in the horizon and it's all broken up so you'll get that one too so go ahead and make one like that the reason I made these lines is now that I'm done with it, this is my pretend illustration. So I'm going to highlight these and go into the paint bucket tool. This is also my live paint tool. So these are live paint groups now. Just by having them highlighted and going into the live paint tool, these become live paint groups. Here I could choose my color and let's say I fill in this one. So easy, right? Because what? They're all connected. This one, a little harder. This one, and this one, quite a bit harder. So this one I get to show you another thing. If you go to objects, there is live paint and you see gap options. Under gap options, you can choose from medium, large gaps, okay, and still no go. You can even go so far as to say your gap options are going to be something like, oh, let's say an absurd inch. And you can see an inch actually repairs all this stuff. But in your illustrations, you're getting this jump that's occurring. So I want to show you another method of actually doing this. And you can see with preview on, if I up this limit, it will show me which ones are now viable. So now this one will work. So 0.38. Now do I want to do that for every illustration part that I have to fill in? No. It's much smarter to actually, you know, maybe get your lines within a certain range every time. Plus, as I said, this flat spot looks unflattering within an illustration file. I know that somewhere along the round you got lazy. Okay, let's look at another thing. The user, the student, will probably go in here and try to repair said circle. So we're going to look at that. They don't really want a whole line going around. They just want the fact that the line is closer together. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to go back into my tool and try to fill the space. And it's going to say, 
No. No, that's not going to work. Because, see these lines, how they're green? And these are not green? In order for to repair something like this, you have to take the lines and go into Object, Live Paint, Merge them. Now you can take your paint bucket tool with your color and fill in the spots. Okay. So now you can see this one actually fills in correctly. And this one's not too bad as far as the outline goes. Because I drew it where these starting to connect every once in a while and I kept this uniform spacing down it will match the curve on the outside okay also in the next video what I'm going to do is start uh, showing you how to highlight in various methods and shadow in various methods